Hi, welcome to my studio. My name's Chris. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to show you how I paint this painting of a fairy. It's reflection in the water and a island in the background. If you're interested in learning how to paint seascapes and water and reflections, this is a great tutorial for you. Let's get started. Here is the finished painting alongside my reference image for this scene. The big fairy with its reflection are the main focus of the scene. I planned the composition and I painted this subject with the intention of drawing the viewer's attention to the boat and the people standing on the deck. I'm painting on Arches 140 pound cold press paper. The dimensions of the painting are 11 inches by seven and a half and I have already sketched a contour drawing of the boats and lightly sketched in the shape of the island in the background. I don't draw in the fine details of the fairy or the reflection, things like that, as I will paint those more freely when I get to that stage. I begin with a mixture of cobalt blue and Payne's gray and a little cerulean blue for the sky. The sky is cloudless. It's darker at the top and gradually lighter as it approaches the island, so I'm going to paint that uh, gradation of color. The paper is already moist. That's important. And that will help me get a nice, soft gradation of color from the top down. As I paint here towards the fairy, I'm careful not to get that blue into the fairy area as uh, the fairy is very light or almost perfectly white in the reference image, so I'm avoiding painting in those areas. As I paint this sky, I, uh, I'm careful not to overwork the, the sky area, uh, too many brush strokes are just going to create uh, too many marks and uh, kind of too much busyness. So I am ready now to move on to the island. Again, the paper is still moist, so as I put this green down, it's going to blend nicely with the uh, sky color, which is what I want. I want to create a blurry edge uh, between the island and the sky. I've mixed up yellow iron oxide and French ultramarine. Uh, yellow ochre would also work good for the yellow. I want a dark, cool blue for these trees in the background on the island. I don't want a solid block of color, so I'm varying the color mix from more blue to more yellowish green. I've gotten in the habit of mixing my greens instead of using a green right out of the tube. As you can see, I have a couple greens on my palette, but I don't use them too much. I tend to mix my greens most of the time. Now as I move to the bottom of the island area, I need to be careful to paint around the light colors of these two small sailboats that are right there at the bottom of the island. They are white in the painting, a uh, very light color, and so I would need to retain those whites as I moved down here to this area of the painting. I mix up some raw sienna and burnt sienna here to paint in the ground at the bottom of the island. And again, it's uh, I'm touching the area of the green trees above that, so these brown colors are blending nicely with the green trees. Now with a bit darker mixture of Payne's Gray and my blues, I paint in that dark area at the bottom of the ferry. The paper is still damp, and you can see the softening of the edge of the paint as I paint in this area. Now I've cleaned off my palette and mixed up a pure just cobalt blue and cerulean blue mixture. I'm using my big number six quill. That's a Princeton Neptune quill brush and it's nice and soft and I'm just putting in lots of this uh, blue color uh, for the water at the right and left hand side of the reflection. This is still my first wash at this point. I'm just trying to kill the whites of the paper except in those few places of real bright highlight and along the side of the ferry. I'm trying to capture the undertones of each area of the painting and not really worried at all about details at this point. I'm using big horizontal strokes to emphasize the water ripples and I'm careful to not paint into that reflection area which needs to stay lighter. Next I mix up some more of my cobalt blue and cerulean blue and pull most of the pigment off the brush. The brush has got a lot of moisture in it but not too much pigment and I just start painting into this really light area of the reflection using horizontal strokes, trying to create nice soft edges where the darker area of the water meets the reflection. I want there to be a nice blending there and not too many real uh, sharp, hard lines. 
I see in the uh, reference image a little variation of color in this reflection. So I've mixed a little bit of my permanent Elizabeth Crimson, which is a red, a, a real cool red, into the blue color there on my palette. And I'm just blending that in a little bit to get a little variation of color, a little bit of violet, a little bit of a red color. Now I've mixed up a, a little darker version of my blue, again, cerulean blue and cobalt blue. And I'm just now adding that or dropping that into the foreground of the water along the edge of the island out there where it's a little bit darker in the reference image. I'm just trying to create that variation in the, uh, in the water that I see throughout the reference image. And you'll notice I'm still using a big brush at this point, that number six quill. I'm not focused on details. I'm just trying to get down the big blocks of color. Okay, I walked away from the painting for about 15 minutes and let it dry. When I test the painting at this point, it's still cool to the touch, but it's not damp. I can come back now with a thicker mixture of color here and paint over the first wash without being worried about getting blooms and cauliflowers in my painting. As long as my paint is still is now pretty thick and has a lot of pigment, not a lot of water in it, I won't run the risk of creating blooms. I'm using a Princeton Aqua Elite Round Number no. 8 brush. This has a really fine, sharp point, and it's great for these small details. I'm looking carefully at my reference image and painting in all those uh, green details at the top of the ferry. Next, I mix up a darker mixture of my Payne's Gray and Ultramarine Blue and paint this dark area at the very bottom of the ferry. This is one of the darkest areas in the painting. I really want to create that contrast between that area and the water and the white side of the ferry. Again, the paper is a lot drier at this point, so it's not really uh, blending or moving out into the other areas of the painting that much. I'm mixing up now a bit more bluish version of that same color, and I'm going to paint now the inside of the ferry, uh, kind of the interior of the uh, car ferry, and I'm careful to paint around the people that are standing there on the deck. That's an important part of my painting, and I want to draw attention to that, so I'm going to have nice hard edges here. I'll have a contrast of colors and a contrast of values that will really attract the viewer's eye when I'm done. I notice there are some areas of rust on the very front end of the ferry, and there's also some red, red objects on the deck, and so I mix up some red permanent alizarin crimson along with some burnt sienna, and I paint in those reddish areas on the uh, edge of the ferry. I, uh, after I paint those in and apply the paint, I uh, take the paint off my brush, make it wet, kind of soften the edges a little bit. I, again, I always want to try and create a, uh, a combination of hard edges and soft edges. So the way you do that is put on the paint and then come back in a little bit and uh, either lift some of the paint or just... Uh, with a wet brush, soften the edge of the paint you've put down just to create that very varying uh, types of edges. You have to keep in mind that too many hard edges can really make a painting look busy. And uh, so I, I'm already trying to soften some of the edges here along the side of the ferry. Now I mix up some more Payne's Gray and Cobalt Blue for the windows along the side of the ferry. This is kind of monotonous work here as I just kind of put in each of these windows. So I'm gonna speed this video up a bit as I paint all those details. You really wanna be careful whenever you're putting in uh, details like this that are repetitive, that you vary the size, the shape, and the spacing in between each of these elements so they look a little bit more natural. You can see as I'm adding all these details now in the ferry that this is already starting to come together and it's really starting to look like my uh, reference image. Now I mix up green gold and French ultramarine. I also have a little puddle of burnt sienna on my palette to add to that very bottom edge of the island foliage. I look at the island as one big shape. I'm definitely not trying to paint individual trees. I vary the 
the colors on the island with areas of darker and then lighter foliage, which create interest and a sense of those individual trees without literally painting every tree. You can see along the top of the island, I give a sense of individual trees by uh, defining their shape where they meet the sky, but I don't overdo it. After I paint those in, I come back with a damp brush and then soften the edges of some of those tree shapes, again, creating some hard edges and some soft and blurry edges. Now I need to carefully paint around those two small white sailboats in the middle ground there, making sure I retain the white of those boats. I blend in the uh, burnt sienna there along the shoreline on either side of the boats and touching that burnt sienna up into the uh, blue green color of the island so that those colors blend beautifully together. I'm done with the island now, so it's back to the water to add those middle values to the mid and foreground. I mix up a darker blue that has more cerulean blue in it. Cerulean blue is a greenish blue that works really well for painting water. I start at the ferry and I move down along the edge of the reflection area. I add more Payne's gray as I move towards the bottom. As you can see from the reference image, the darkest area of water is to the right of the reflection. I blend the colors as I go, touching the brush to the bead of paint that's already on the paper, allowing the paint to blend. That dark value next to the light values in the reflection create a really beautiful contrast that attracts the eye. I'm using a Princeton Aqua Elite round number 12 brush. It holds a fair bit of water and paint, but it also has a nice point. As I create the ripple effects, I often take a damp brush and soften the edges as I go. It is almost all a horizontal brush movement at this point to create the movement of the water. I also see the reflection from the inside of the boat and the people at the bow, so I mix up some of those colors and add them to the reflection as well. I keep squinting at the reference image to simplify the shapes and the values that I see. Finally, I put in that far left landmass behind the ferry that I missed earlier. Next, I come back with a bluish gray color, which is Payne's gray and ultramarine, maybe a little cobalt blue, and start putting in the shadow areas on the surface of the ferry. Even though the ferry is white, there are lots of gray and blue tones, especially on the shadow side of the ferry. Adding these shadows will really give the ferry a sense of shape and form. Now with a much darker value mixed, I paint the inside of the ferry at the bow. This is really one of the darkest areas in the reference image, so it's important that I get it really dark in my painting. So this is the point at which you need to step back from your painting, evaluate it, and really see if there's anything else that needs to be added. It's really easy to overwork your painting, and it's really important to know when to stop. So at this point, I'm pretty much done. I'm gonna add my signature to the painting, and uh, I'm going to call it good. I really like how this one turned out. If you'd like to give this tutorial a try, you will find the links to the reference image in the description below. I will also provide links to all the materials and supplies I use to create this painting. If you purchase these supplies using the links I provide, I earn a very small commission and you pay the same price. Thanks for considering supporting the production of this content in this way. If you found the video to be helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. I put out videos like this one about once a week. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.